I just want to take a moment to thank you all for coming and for supporting the Amelia Island Book Festival. I'm Marie Fenn. Let's get back to the writer's workshop. This man a letter. Didn't expect an answer. I got a personal reply from this man. His response to my request to being honorary chairman for the festival was, I'd be honored. He's a number one international uh, selling thriller author. Steve, thank you. Thank you He's so much. All right, let's talk about writing. What, what do you want to talk about? Let's see what she is. I thought it'd be easier. I, I could sit up here and talk, but I'd rather hear what you want to talk about. Yes. So you're a prolific writer. Can you tell us a little bit about your habits and lifestyle as a writer? Well, writing is a discipline, okay? It's not an obsession, though. It's a discipline, and you've got to set the discipline down to stay with it. But I made sure that I wrote my thousand words every day. How did I do that? Well, I found the time of day that's most, that, that, that works for me. I'm a morning person. Some of you are not. Diana Gavaldon, you'll meet here uh, tonight and tomorrow, is a night person. She works from midnight to 5 a.m. every night. That's her, that's her time. You have to find the time, put it in there, sit down, make it work, and do it as a discipline, not becoming obsessed with it. Because if you do get published, and if a, write, if a publishing house does want to buy you, your number one job as a writer is to deliver the product on time. Deliver the product on time. You have two things you've got to do. You've got to write it, and you've got to get it there when you said you were going to get it there. It's all about discipline, sitting yourself down, and producing those words on a daily basis, because there's only one way to learn how to write. And you know what it is. <laughs> you have to write. One way, one way on. Those of you who don't know my story, I wrote my first word at 35. Uh, I did, from the day I wrote my first word to the day I sold my first word was 12 years. There's 85 rejections during that time over five different manuscripts. I made it the 86th time, 12 years after I started. So during that 12 years of rejection, I would go to Barnes & Noble every Saturday. I would drive down to Jacksonville every Saturday, go to Barnes & Noble, and I would go down there and I would go through the shelves and I'd buy every first novel I could find. And I would take those first novels home and I would read them like textbooks. And I would read what works and what didn't work. I'd read what made sense to me, what didn't, what slowed me down, what it distracted me, what got on my nerves, what was smooth and was perfect. I learned reading other people's writing. And then I learned what I liked and what I didn't like, and I incorporated that into my style, and that's how I learned to do it. Yes, ma'am? How, how do you manage to do a book a year <laughs> with all the other stuff you have? To do? Well, they pay me. That's what nice. I <laughs> And I need the money, so there is that incentive for me. So for me, I knew I wanted to be uh, right for a New York publishing house. That's what I wanted to do. Now, in my day, in the 90s, that was the only choice you had. There were, there were no other choices. So I knew that if I got bought, they would want a book a year, because in those days, everyone did just one. No one did multiple books a year back in the 90s. They did one. So I trained myself during that 12 years of rejection to write a book in 12 months. So you should do the same thing. You should start your novel and say, I'm going to be done 12 months from today. Set your schedule. But I'll start in March. I, will, I want to be 25% by June. I want to be halfway by Labor Day. I want to be three quarters by Thanksgiving. I want to be done by January. And I stick to that schedule. And that, that's my goal. I set my goal to stay with that schedule. That's part of the discipline of setting that schedule and sticking to that schedule. Remember, 90% of all writers do not finish what they start. That is a fact. Set your schedule, stick with it. You don't think about that whole book, I just think about that first quarter of the book, and I'm going to be done on this day. When I first realized I was a writer, it was interesting because um, it was in 2005, I was at VoucherCon, this was when ITW was born, International Thriller Writers. We were in a room with, uh, God, it was like 50, 60 of these writers, biggest names you've ever seen all in the room here, and I'm sitting there, and I've just, I had three books out. Amber Room, Roman Off, Third Secret. So I'm, I'm just, I'm a rookie compared to all these people in here. And <clears throat> all at once, somebody asked me a question. And they wanted me to answer a question, and I realized 
I'm one of them. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm actually one of them now. And that was the moment uh, in September 2005 when I realized I first called myself a writer. I never called myself a writer before that time. And I'd been writing at that point for 15 years. But I'd never called myself a writer to that moment. Other questions? Yes. What was the moment that you realized you had made it? That's a good question there. <laughs> you mean made it in the sense of being published or being successful in it? Being successful. <sighs> well, this is going to sound really weird, but that's, that's a recent thing. And you would look at things, you know, sales. Uh, contracts, you know, for the future. Uh, is your name getting mentioned? You know, like, you know how you say all the time, like, if you like John Grisham, you'll like this. Mm -hmm. But now, you, if you like Steve Berry, you like this, you know, you're getting mentioned in these regards. In reviews, are reviewers comparing things to you? Because you're, you're sticking in their brain. These are all elements of things. It's called branding. So it was about a year ago. Which is weird because at that point I would have had 17 books, about 24 million, about 23 million copies around the world, those kinds of things, 50 countries. But I didn't consider myself successful at that point, to be honest with you, uh, because in this business it's fleeting. You can lose it. You can lose it like that. So about a year ago, maybe, is when I finally began to say, "Yes, I think you're right. I think I am a branded writer." So I'm very cautious about success stuff, and you should be too, by the way. Very cautious about it. Take it slow and take it steady. And if it happens, you'll see it. It'll be right in front of your face and you might not be able to deny it anymore. I can't write on the road. I don't, I just can't. I'm like Grisham said last night, that yesterday, he, had, he writes in one place. I'm saying what? I write in one place. I like to write in one place. Uh, David's not. David Baldacci well, can write anywhere. I watched Jim Rollins write a novel in the back of a C-130 transport, 10,000 feet over a rack. And now, you ever been to one? It's 100 degrees, the back door's open, it's shaking like this the whole time. We're going up and down, and he's typing on. I, 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 there's no way. There's no way. It all depends. But that's his discipline. He can do that. Yes. Go ahead. What's a book that you've read that might surprise us that you really enjoyed that's maybe outside of your genre or what we might expect? I tell you a really good book I read, and it's completely out of some genre. It's called Carter Beats the Devil. Yeah. By David Korn. Is that his name? David something. He's a three three word name. It's called Carter Beats the Devil. It's a fun book. It's about 1920s, deals with a magician and deals with Harding. You wouldn't think I would even read such a thing, but it was a lot of fun. It was well written.